Hey slash B slash. I have some creepy OC for you to close out your summer. It's kind of lengthy, but if you can focus for the 10 minutes or so that it takes me to share this story, then I think you'll be pleased. Then again, it is summer, so I'll probably just get shushed right out of here. I took these pictures earlier today, so there isn't a timestamp. However, to prove that I'm not messing around, here is the exact location where these pictures were taken. Pick attached. If you want to call me dishonest, then that's fine, but at least you have the guts to go here and prove it yourself. I will commence sharing the creepy stuff in the next post. In 4 OP's camera is poor. Yeah, sorry, I can't afford a high-end camera like you. In 4, heard her copy pasta, prove it. Three days ago, my last living grandparent, my mother's father, passed away at the age of 89. He was a World War II vet, and my mom tells me that after returning home from the Navy, he was never quite the same. In fact, he was pretty paranoid about nearly everything. I was never really allowed to stay at his house. In 1965, his wife died suddenly, with no real explanation. My mother tells me that my grandfather became extremely fearful of a nuclear war with the communists and that he started to dig a bomb shelter out of the rock and limestone on his land. I had never seen the bomb shelter until today, when the family was going through my grandfather's belongings. Pick attached, it's the entrance. I had only ever asked my grandfather about his hand dug cave one time in my life, which was when I was about 16 or so and we got together for Christmas. He didn't really seem to want to talk about it. He just told me to never go there because, it's just damned. What the word in the blank was, I've never been able to figure out. No amount of googling helped me determine what he said. All I know is that it sounds like, ah, uh, Sue Air. The way he said it was creepy enough that I never asked about it again. This picture is a view back towards the door after you go down some steps. I hadn't even thought about the shelter since then until today, when my mother asked me to go and check it out and see if I could find anything worth putting into the estate sale. To be honest, I was pretty excited. I thought maybe I'd find old gas masks, non-perishable food items from the 1960s, and maybe even some forms of entertainment that he had planned to use to keep the family busy in the event of an attack. This picture is of the first hallway, which curves off to the right at the end. The first thing I found was this rudimentary toilet. Of course, time wasn't kind to it, so there wasn't much left. It had obviously been in disrepair for years. I just took a picture of it and kept going. Although I did have to admire the work that had to have gone into chipping away at the rock, one heave at a time, but further down the hallway, I came to nothing more than a bunch of old rusted garbage on the floor. I instantly felt my heart sink, because I had such high hopes for what this exploration would yield. It was beginning to look like my grandfather had just given up at some point on his dream of crafting a shelter. Pick related, it's the garbage. But you'll notice that, in the previous picture, the hallway curves off to the left. I was expecting to hit a flat wall of rock, but instead, I found a huge, iron door that was padlocked shut. Fortunately for me, it had become rusted to all heck, so I was actually able to just pick up a decent sized rock off the floor and hit the padlock until it busted the entire loop that it went through. Opening the door was another story, though. It was extremely heavy and had become rusted over the years. I found a shovel back in the garbage heap and used all my strength to force it open with a lever action. Pick attached, it's the view after I got the door open. The only thing back here was a hallway that abruptly ended where he had stopped digging. But there was a doorway off to the right. I went through the doorway, and inside, this room looked more like a cavern than a bomb shelter. As I looked around, I noticed this carving in the stone. At first, I thought, oh, no big deal, maybe he just came back here to pray or something. But that's when I started to notice that there were more carvings. Suddenly, I see this face carved into the rock. There were faces everywhere. Seriously. It was as though there were a bunch of ghostly faces staring at you in that room. Pick attached. And here's another example. I noticed that while the previous one appeared to be a soft, female face, this one was an angry, male face. And there were really quite a few of them, I don't know, probably six or seven. They were all carved into the walls as though they were facing that cross carving, worshipping it or something. I happened to look down at the ground below the skull carving, and there, sitting in a bunch of concrete rubble, was a human. Bone. And don't get me wrong, I'm not just spooked. This was no dear bone. 
This was clearly a human bone. My heart was pounding out of my chest. As I started to look more closely, I saw more bones coming out of the concrete, as though human remains had been dumped in a batch of quick dry cement or something. Then, I could have sworn I heard a quiet laugh from the corner of that room. And I ran. I ran out of that room like the devil was chasing me. I ran all the way out of the shelter and all the way back to the house. WTF, did the post with the bone just get deleted, or is, B, just acting up again? What the heck, did a moderator just delete my last post? Anyway, continuing. And then I saw this one. Unlike every single other carving in this room, which were faces, this one was clearly meant to be a skull. It seemed so out of place, since I felt that the rest of the room had religious connotations. Why was there a skull? Well, I found out soon enough. Wikipedia link about ossuaries, an ossuary is a chest, building, well, or site made to serve as the final resting place of human skeletal remains. I wouldn't pronounce it as ossuaire, but it could plausibly be pronounced something like that in some accents and dialects of English. OP never comes back and the thread as a whole gets deleted a few seconds after this last post. The reference deleted image. Welcome to Whidbey Island, a real place in the real world located at the top left of the continental United States. The story you are about to read, whether you believe it to be true or not, is very real to me. Seeing this is my experience and my story. Whidbey is a beautiful place or eagle's nest, and whether you look north, south, east, or west, you will see mountains, almost as if we were inside a large bowl. Also, it is practically a rainforest in its own right. There is a free bus service to ferry docks and a single bridge, a local phone company, and so many hidden gems that I would recommend anyone visit here just once, but also, there was this one time. Now, with the general map out of the way, I will specifically say I once lived in Skagit Head, which is located at the very, very bottom of this island, and from the cliff sides, you can even see the Space Needle and the tallest of Seattle's buildings from my home. It took a good half hour to walk to the nearest street lamp, as well as the nearest bus stop. I had no car at the time, for this story, I had been on Whidbey for almost two years already. I had moved, and a relative offered a room. Seeing as we had not spoken in the longest time, and seeing as Whidbey is far from the best place to find a job, most of my mornings I woke up well around 3 a.m. just so I could make it to the first bus that left. Near 5.20 a.m., the first few nights were scary. I had learned wolves are on this island, and even some cats are large enough to take small children. Luckily, I was already 20 years old stood at 6 feet, and weighed about 150 pounds, but darn, those towering trees, the snap of twigs under my feet, regardless of the fact I walked in the center of the two-lane roads, shutters, eventually I got less scared when, ya yeah, no, nothing happened, some nights, though, I jumped out of my skin when a deer or two hopped onto the road just to say hi, anyway, enough distractions, one night specifically, I woke up earlier than usual and, on a whim, decided to leave earlier so I could enjoy not having to need any pep in my step. Whidbey Island is also extremely hilly, especially on the south end, so I can say with all honesty that I had to walk uphill both ways to and from home. I went to the bottom of my cliff's eye, and was about to turn onto the next windy road that left uphill, when my mobile began acting up. I walk in the dark with music on low, so I can still hear stuff, but I like the audio, so I don't freak out, I can't really explain it. The sound just went to stuff, like ancient ham radio stuff. I was not really worried at first. My mobile was an ancient droid devour running Android 1.6 off of the Verizon network. And if anyone so much as sent me a text or an email, yeah, my phone acted out. So while walking in the center of the road, I still I rubbernecked and tried to figure out what in the world was wrong this time. Only to succeed in accidentally dazing myself with the flashlight app that turned my screen into a pure white beam of blindness. Now momentarily blind, and still hearing buzzing stuff in my headphones, I turned my mobile around to avert the light, as well as rub my eyes, I also stopped walking. I didn't want to veer off to the side of the row, darn it, phone, I got my sight back, looked around with my flashlight out, and spotted the deer in front of me, and like I suspected, they jogged away back into the forest, glad they did too. They did not want to walk all over the pavement, then, just to make sure, I turned around to check my back once more, as you know. In the end, you were a scaredy cat, and that's when things got really interesting. Remember that buzz I was talking about? Well, I did not think about it at first, but it actually worsened when the deer jogged off, and as I turned to view what was behind me, it worsened still, jolts for a second, sorry, this is the hard part, 
In all fairness, it was dark can likely a trick of the imagination. I will not go. It's real dude on you. That is not how I roll, but this thing. I was still pretty close to the intersection. I lightly mentioned above, meaning woods in all directions. And in one corner in particular, there was what appeared to be a scarecrow. Not by the straw or worn cloth, but by the unnaturally tall height and lifeless. Still body expression. The light of my mobile barely made out the appearance. But I know the majority of whatever I saw was black, with a hint of white at the top. Before Slenderman, I do not believe in slenderness, but I can't ignore that with what I could see. I could not make any sort of facial feature, let alone any features. All I saw was a tall, black thing with some white splotches on the top, that, and my mobile was acting up. Oh yeah, guess what my phone did next? Live up to the crappy Android's name and turn off on me, no audio in my headphones. Just the fear of a partially seen image burned to my memory as my sneakers grabbed a mine of their own and led me towards the bus stop. Run the fudge up George Street faster than the Flash.mov. I passed Gamble Road, which meant I passed the worst part of the hill I was climbing. Feel free to Google Maps, you will find this road as well as Deer Lake, Kajir Thrift Stores, and the Little Calvary Chapel Church in Skagathead, but I still had a bit more to go. My breathing grew heavy. I sounded out of breath, maybe because I was out of breath. Whitby Island is one heck of a place. Bikers and joggers got their work cut out for them. And here I was panting like a dog with a silly phone running uphill like there was no tomorrow. Also, I apologize if this story does not live up to your scary standards, but there is no chase scene. Just a crying 20-year-old who was hugging the light post where the giant welcome to Skagit. Head sign was at, soon after, with sheer dumb luck, my relative and I moved to Seattle, where I have stayed ever since. He went back, and I prayed. This happened in January of 2020, when I was 17 and in high school. My grandfather is a cattle farmer and a business owner, and he hired me to feed cows for him after school. When I was in sports, I would leave the school and the ball field after practice, and my grandfather's properties were about 30 minutes out of town and around 20 minutes between each property. By the time I got to what we will call the 80, it was around 7 to 8 at night, and in the midst of winter, it was dark and cold. The way the system worked is that I fill up buckets at the farm at his house and then drive to each farm with a designated amount of feed I need to bring with me in order to feed the cows. And in the time I spent filling and putting up buckets, I forgot to grab the key to the gate, and so when I arrived at the 80, I realized this. I got out and started handing buckets over the fence and carried them two at a time to the feed troughs. While walking, I was whistling be happy, just the tune itself. Looking back with the knowledge I have now, whether or not the legends are true, it wasn't a good idea to identify myself like that out there in the woods. When I finished, I walked back to the truck, and when I hopped the fence and was about to open the door, I heard a noise behind me. It was very quiet, but it was a quiet night, and I heard it coming from the adjacent property. It sounded similar to the sound someone makes when they have never learned to whistle, the air blowing and every once in a while getting a slight whistle through their lips. I listened for a while and thought that it was odd, but I couldn't really think much about it. I moved on and headed to the next farm to feed. Over the span of the coming four days in the week, I did the same thing every day, besides forgetting the key, I came back and would feed the cows at 80. I noticed that during the week the cows would not come to the troughs when called, so I would just fill up the troughs and move on because I didn't feel like trying to find them on the 80 acre property. Every time I would come back to the truck, I would hear noises coming from the adjacent property more whistling. Through the days, I noticed that it was slowly progressing as it would when someone would try and learn whistling, until eventually, on Thursday, it was as loud as someone cattle whistling the whistle you see in movies and in real life the very loud whistle when someone puts two fingers in their mouth to project the sound. That night I went home and laid in bed, and I thought about the whistling phenomenon that was happening when I was doing my job. I noticed that it had progressed from Monday, and by Thursday it was loud enough to fully grab my attention, as if someone was trying to do that in general, and then I also noticed that it was in the tune of Be Happy, like how I had done on Monday. It unnerved me, but I didn't want to put more thought into it and chalked it up to a mockingbird or some other bird. Friday was the day that everything hit the fan, so to speak. When I arrived at the gate, 
I had the keys with me. That day had been particularly hard, and so I was frustrated to begin with. When I was trying to get the correct key on the key ring, I dropped the keys into some tall grass by the gate. I lost them in the dark and the grass, and so I grunted frustratedly and said, damn it, after finding the keys, I did my job and came back to the truck. I was getting ready to leave when I heard a noise from the adjacent property, it sounded identical to a calf in distress or being attacked by something. My grandfather would move new calves he bought or some from his properties to this adjacent property as well. I didn't want to investigate the sounds, but I felt that it was my job to do so. I grabbed my phone and made my way down and across the road. I hopped the fence and started to hike upwards towards where the sound was coming from, and as I was making my way, the noises made by the unknown thing slowly started to change, they went from sounding more cow-like to more of a guttural and scratcher sounding noise. Groaning would best describe it. I slowed my pace due to this, but I didn't stop moving. Eventually I was about halfway to the top, where the sounds were coming from, when the sounds changed again. Whatever was above me on the hill started to do what sounded like speaking. It sounded like someone who had never learned English, or any language for that matter, was trying to sound out a word. It started to say the word damn it over and over, slowly sounding it out in the most guttural and raspy voice I had ever heard and sensed then. It slowly said damn it in this way until it could say it fluently and smoothly. Then the pitch and tone of the speech got lighter, saying damn it each time its voice got lighter and lighter. Until it sounded very similar to me. At this point, I was confused and a bit panicked, so in a flight, fight, or freeze moment, I decided to confront this trespasser on my land. Thinking it was maybe a coked up homeless man, I was willing to at least identify who this was. I scaled the rest of the way and came to the top of the hill. As I walked over onto the flat top, I started to yell, hey, this is private property, when I turned on my flashlight and saw this. Picture related. I recently drew this for my own sake, but what I saw was something I'd never seen before and have only heard since. It was crouched down in a squat with its back hunched, and when I turned on the flashlight, its head turned from facing forward with its body and faced me. Still squatting, it started at me, and I got a pretty good look at it. Squatting, I estimate it was five feet tall, the face was elongated, the facial features were human, but they were contorted and longer than normal, and everything was stretched in a way that is hard to describe. Its skin had looked leathery, it was grayish white, it was stretched over its bones, its stomach was sucked into its body, and it had a deep rib cage. Its arms were very long, and it looked like it had two sets of knees. Its hands and fingers were abnormally long and ended in what looked like claws or protruding bones. While we were staring at each other, we didn't move, and then slowly and without making a sound, it stood without taking its eyes off me and then turned its whole body towards me. The neck was long and swung with the body, but the head didn't move. After this it toured over me, I'm 6'1 and it felt that this creature in front of me stood above me by 2 feet at least, I was only 10 yards from it and we stayed that way for only a moment but my adrenaline was going off, and it felt like forever that I was being stared down by this thing, and that's when it moved its mouth, its mouth was along as its face width and went from what looked like cheek to cheek, it opened its mouth, and said damn it back to me in my own voice, it mimicked me almost perfectly, the tone, infliction, pitch, everything was identical, but it felt wrong, something was off, and it was enough to where that broke the staring contest and I turned and ran, I ran faster than I have ever ran before, I came down the hill and vaulted over the fence, hopped in the truck and peeled out of there, I did come back after that for my job, and I did hear the whistling again. It's been years since that encounter, and I still can't really tell what to make of it. It brought me into the world of paranormal research, and I've interviewed over the phone and in person many people, whether they be military personnel, business owners, or your average Joe. A lot of people have seen things like this or something similar. And it's something that racks my brain often. Thoughts?
B me, around 9-11 years old, staying over at a friend's house overnight. My sister is staying over too because my friend has a sister that she is friends with. We play video until dark. My friend and I are sleeping in a little sheet metal shed on the fringe of their property, while my sister and her friend are sleeping in the house. The property is filled with elephant grass that has paths cut out of it leading to different parts of the property. The grass is about 8 feet tall, so you can't see anything. The shed is on one of these paths, and you can't see anything but the path from the shed, get in the shed and play video with a friend, it's comfy af, around 1am, he falls asleep, I continue playing video, suddenly, I hear banging on the shed door, I think, WTF, and say loudly, who's there, like an idiot, there's no response but more banging, I can't sleep because I'm scared, I try to wake my friend, but he's a deep sleeper, more banging, I realize my sister and her friend must be pranking me, I gather courage and open the door, look around, nothing, not even around the sides, I'm scared even more now, I close the door and try to go to sleep, but every 10-30 minutes there's more banging. I can't sleep because I'm very scared. After a few hours, it just stops. I finally snooze. My sister and her friend deny involvement. The rest of the sleepover goes fine, and we all go home. Great grandpa had a farm, nothing too crazy, just a small town in the countryside where everyone knows each other. Despite primarily growing veggies, great grandpa is kind of famous for his chicken and eggs. We visit them once a year. That particular year, he seemed kind of upset about something but wouldn't say what. He occasionally looked in one direction for a while before continuing his day. I don't know what he was growing. I assumed he was just checking to see if it was ripe. Later that night, I overheard him talking to my parents about something that bothered him in the fields. He was stumped as to what it could be. He just kept repeating, it must be a devil. A few days later, dad is helping him set up some traps and other stuff around the farm. The next day, Gramps is waking everybody up at 5 a.m. for breakfast as usual. Suddenly, there is a loud scream, like a woman with a gravelly voice. He grabs his rifle and runs outside with his two big labs. A second scream happens, coming from over this hill where the stable was, assume north. Gramps is the only one who can use a gun, so we all just stand behind him and watch him go towards the sound. A third scream, from the complete opposite direction, assume south. The dogs are barking in a different direction than both screams, where the house was, assume east. Gramps turns around and fires twice in the other direction, assume west. He shouts something about God, Mary, and being protected, then fires another shot or two, this time towards the south. Everyone is scared. After several minutes of silence, Dad and Uncle ran to where Grandpa was heading, north. I'm the only guy left at the house, so I run after them even though I'm 13. They're frantically looking around to see where the traps were and what was caught. They follow a trail and notice a few of the traps are missing entirely. They look around and realize they have basically gone in a circle and are back where they started. They finally notice I've been tailing them and tell me to head back. Gramps whispers something to Dad and Uncle that I couldn't make out. Everyone tries to forget about it and say it was maybe an old quote, even though we knew there were none around the area. Late at night, I can't sleep. I look outside the window, and Gramps is sitting outside, probably waiting for it to come out. I decide to go ask him what that was. Before I can open the door, I hear him say I shouldn't go outside. I turn around, he's sitting on the rocking chair inside, facing the door, with his rifle next to him, and a butcher knife by the table. I ask him when he came in, he says he hasn't stepped outside since dinner. When I tell him I saw him outside through the window, he gives me the most intense stare I've ever seen, and loads his gun. He told me to go back to sleep and forget about it. Eventually, I fell asleep somehow. At around 4am, we wake up to gunshots and glass breaking. Dad and uncle run out, but this time my mom holds me back so I won't go too. They are all screaming something at each other. Dad comes back into the room and says we can come out now. Gramps had heard the thing tap the window, and shot it through the curtains. There was no one outside, but the curtains and front porch had what looked like blood on them. He'd run out to catch it, but it ran out of sight in seconds. We called a priest who didn't believe him, but did the prayers anyway. We never went back to his farm again, even though he told us nothing had happened since that day, and boasted about killing a demon. This happened a year ago. It's been two weeks ago since I'm writing this. I decided to bring my girlfriend, my friend, and her exchange student boyfriend from Finland, and my other friend, who's from Hong Kong, for context because this may play into it. I shot a deer that morning, skinned it, and butchered it, and I brought it to my family farm, a different farm from the first story, to drop it off for coyotes to finish off or drag off. My friend, whom we will call RF, Russian friend, is a unique individual, but I love her to death, so I don't really care. My girlfriend will be called GF, of course, and my other two friends will be HK, Hong Kong, and FB, Finboy. We drive out to my farm, and it's around 6.20pm, 
it's quite dark already. We get there and are driving towards my already established camp area. RF mentioned something along the lines of, huh, wouldn't it be funny if we saw a skinwalker, Anon? I immediately tell her to be quiet, don't say that out loud. RF apologizes and agrees that it's a bad idea. FB says, wait, what is a skinwalker, Anon? I tell him to stop, and I already told RF to shut up about it. He proceeds to keep bantering and pestering me about it, and I'm basically forced to tell him about the legends and stories. Finally, he shuts up about it, and looking back, there was already a sense of paranoia from just talking about it. We drop off deer carcasses and guts deep in the woods about a football field away from our camping spot. We get to the spot, set up camp, chairs, food, fire, and chill. My girlfriend and I notice we need more firewood. We get in my truck and drive to a brush pile we have on the property. I collect wood, and my girlfriend stops me. She says, wait anon. I ask, what's wrong, babe? She says, Eschidich, listen, we hear movement in the trees, but not light movement either. It stops, and we kind of just continue getting wood. I'm thinking at the moment that it's probably a deer or some other animal. We come back with wood. The fire lasts probably another hour or two. This all happened from 6.30 pm to 11 pm. My girlfriend and I leave for firewood again. We get there, and we were joking about what if something is out there. We laugh and gather wood. While I'm chopping a log to break it up, I smell something. This sounds so stereotypical, but I swear it was like this. I stand up and take a deep breath to catch my breath. A foul smell vaguely wafts into my nose. It could be roadkill, wet dog, or rotting garbage. Damn, this is some situation, I think to myself. I brush it off but keep it in the back of my head. We come back and we're eating, drinking apple juice, Martinelli's gold medal choice grade sparkling apple juice, to be specific. Anyway, we are chilling, and Facebook brings up the skinwalker topic again. HK pipes up, and they start talking amongst themselves about RF as well. My girlfriend and I look at each other and just say, forget it. They are going to do whatever. The tension in the air is getting more and more palpable, the air just feels heavy. RF says, wait. Where are the wood sounds? I ask, what do you mean? At that moment, I noticed it too. Goddamn more strange stuff, I'm thinking. RF is getting more and more afraid, she wants to leave. I tell her to relax, it's all good. I was also afraid because this isn't normal. But I didn't want to scare everyone, I was the guide, the one who knew the area, and the most responsible out of everyone except my GF. HK and FB are getting scared as well, looking around and behind them. We have cows on my farm, and we would hear our new bull, Kaiser, doing his thing. RF would always ask what it was, and I would rationalize it. It kept happening, and I was put at ease. I'm sitting back, enjoying the fire when we hear a howl or yip. RF says, what is that, Anon? I say, coyotes, they won't come near, they are afraid of humans. It sounded like a coyote impersonating a rooster's crow. That was strange, I was thinking. Coyotes don't really make sounds like that in my area, they normally just yip and howl and it was only one coyote. It keeps going, and I get super annoyed. Oi, go away, eh? I yelled at the top of my lungs at where the sounds were coming from. When it stopped, my heart kind of dropped. I can't tell you why, but I felt the rush of fear and adrenaline pump into my veins. I say, there, it stopped. The sound goes off again, and it's much, much closer. It went from a kind of ambient sound to being 50 yards from us. I'm kind of nervous, I can hear it much better. It doesn't sound like a normal coyote, it's more of a human interpretation of one. Super cliche, I know, but I'm being serious. RF, FB, HK, GF, and I all look at the direction it came from. RF says, forget this, she said. She got up, and Facebook calmed her down. I stood up and watched the area where it was coming from slowly fanning the area with my eyes, looking for movement. I keep looking, and I see movement, and it's big. I could tell all my friends and GF to look to me for guidance. Without looking at them, I tell them to start packing. FB says, Anon, wait, what's going on? 
I say, I said, now. I told HK and RF to start gathering the trash and food, and I asked my girlfriend to get my axe and tools and put them in my truck. I say, FB, come with me, we're going to put out the fire. I grab my bucket and start speed walking to a pond not far away. I get there, and the sounds kick up again, it's moving, and now it's 30 yards from us. FB says, what the heck is that? FB is looking into the woods. I grab the bucket and him and run. I put out the fire and tell everyone to get inside. As everyone is getting in, the sound is getting really frantic. It started sounding like screaming, human screaming. We drive off and leave the farm. Everyone is quiet, and I'm slowly going down the dirt road. I rolled down my window and stuck my head out to listen. It's utter and disturbing silence. I hit the gas and took off. Later, I talked to my girlfriend about what happened. She told me that she could tell something bad was happening before the sounds, she said my posture would go from relaxed to stiff and alert. And I talked to Facebook, and I asked him what he saw. He told me after some persuasion that he saw a figure in the darkness, moving around. And for context, before that night, he had never heard of a skinwalker. I'm probably 12 at the time. Walking in the woods with two friends, we are chilling, talking, and walking. When suddenly we hear rustling in the bushes, lots of rustling, it's getting louder. And we start to panic, we book it down the hill and look back up. All we see, is a huge, broad-shouldered black entity with glowing red eyes, not circles, but apple slice shaped evil eyes, it has a mist-like attribute to it, kind of like the heat waves of a mirage. It starts levitating towards us, and we take off towards my house. Running as fast as we can, I'm terrified feeling like I'm about to wet my pants, we look back, and it's got its arms outstretched as if it wanted to hug, or grab us, we keep running, until we get to my house, we agree not to tell our parents because they will think I'm imagining things, we decide to go to sleep, I don't know how much later it was when I wake up unable to move or make a sound, all I can do is look around, I glance into the corner of my room and see it, it materializes into existence and just sits in the corner, staring at me, it slowly comes to the foot of my bed and leans over me, that's when a pair of long, hairy arms with black razor-sharp nails come from above me, covering my eyes. I woke up the next morning and have never seen anything like this again. It's probably around 5.19 in the morning, mid-November, because of hunting season. I like getting up before the sun rises to get a drop on deer. Walking through an old trail in the woods, the crunching of leaves under my feet and my cold, icy breaths are all I can hear. Besides that, it's just nighttime woodland sounds. At the time, I couldn't own a gun so I had gifted CZ.223. I keep walking until I get to my stand, then climb up and hang my pack from hooks in the tree. I take out the antlers and grunt, then sit for maybe an hour, maybe 40 minutes before sunrise. I decide to rattle and grunt. After getting done, I sit back. After like 20 minutes, I hear a grunt or wheeze. Oh shoot, it's a big buck. Pog, I hear a horny big buck heading my way. Crunch, 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 stop deer fever is taking over, and I'm shaking with excitement. Beta Kook has never shot a buck before. I can hear the buck moving around 10 yards away from the stand bated breath as she listened. The moon is quite bright tonight, so I can see in the darkness. I can't see the forest floor, but a ray of moonlight passes by my tree, low to the ground. The buck is getting closer. I get CZ ready, aiming downwards to the right of my stand. The buck is heading literally a foot away from my tree. I can see its antlers in the small ray of moonlight. This is exciting. My AG class had a contest where if you got the biggest buck out of the whole class, you'd get like 200 bucks or something. Money boner. The excitement is big, and deer are bigger. I wait till I can see its body to take a shot. I can't see anything. Moonlight rays split between two trees on the deer path, pitch black where there are no rays. I can't see the deer after the rack leaves the moonlight. I can hear it, though it's going past me. I'm focusing on the sound and not on where it is visually. I see movement and snap my eyes towards it. 
an elongated human foot and calf pass through the light, I wait, feeling confused. The brain kind of just fogs up. I kind of sit there, wondering what I just saw. Literally, the leg looked like it was someone walking or crawling on all fours. My brain suddenly realizes what happened, and my stomach drops and the adrenaline starts pumping. I slowly sit back, trying to be as quiet as possible, clutching a rifle while semi-hyperventilating, scared out of my mind. The fear is straight and primal, as if I'm being hunted instead of the other way around. I want to look behind me. Don't do it, you idiot. Does it regardless of the brain's input slowly I look behind the tree I'm sitting against. I look up the hill, scanning the perimeter of the area, and I can see nothing, nothing, red eyes, nothing, wait what I snap back to the eyes, the most piercingly menacing eyes I've ever seen. The eyes have red eye whites, and its pupils are glowing yellow or orange. I panic harder than I already am. I immediately sit back against the tree again, gripping the rifle so tightly that my nails are scratching into the barrel. I kind of pass out and wake up when it's daylight, rifle still in my lap. I look around, nothing. Basically, I bolt back to my dad's truck, and he lets me drive. I hop in and drive home at the speed of light. My friend is into, X and, K, and he's going on an inner woods trip on his grandfather's land, which is over 500 acres of heavily wooded area, he grabs his SKS, and a K and heads inner woods, they arrive and trek up to their camping location, set up camp, and start mucking about, stalker larping, while cooking, they notice a slight stink but shake it off, however, the smell keeps progressing, becoming unbearable, my friend gets the idea to put on his M40 gas mask, but it doesn't help, and he almost vomits in the mask, he says the smell was moving in a circle, eventually, it dissipates, and they try to sleep, gripping their chins and batnik gf, they hear noises, and the smell arrives again, along with heavy movement, they get up with guns at low readiness and see a large, dark figure moving quite fast around them in the woods, it gets close, and they realize it's a large black wolf, or dog, it gets really close, and a friend shoots at it, the dog moves away fast, getting lit up with the muzzle flash, it's much larger than expected, and they are freaked out, the dog runs around them, in a circle while they try to put a round on target, eventually, the dog stops, and they run out of ammo, they reload and look around, a friend turns on his headlamp and starts searching, after searching, they see the figure, and it stands up on two legs from all fours, it lurches towards them and reveals itself in the light, the creature is the stereotypical dogman or werewolf proportionally, but the head is, what my friend describes in detail, he says the head is that of a dog, and looks like a picture, hairless, and in some places fleshless, like it was infected with some skin disease, it's panting and staring at them, and it starts lurching and wobbling towards them, he says that it shook side to side while it walked, very unnervingly, more than a creepy zombie dog, they run, shooting behind themselves, as they go, my friend turns and shoots into the general area of the creature, after a solid few thumps, the creature stops, lowers itself, and howls, my friend says it sounded identical to the one in the American werewolf in London, they run back to the grandparents place, startling the grandfather, when he asks what's up, my friend tells him they were shooting at raccoons and possums, grandpa looks at him like he knows, grandpa owns over a hundred guns for various reasons, but the creature, he thinks, is the main one, that was my friend's story, I've heard tons of Inawood spooky stories, but never experienced something like this, this is the deepest I've gone, I'm 20 years old, and my family has a farm, my stepfather got this new video camera, I've been in those woods lots of times and know everything, I started roaming the woods with a video camera, doing silly videos, as it's getting dark, I'm heading home, sometimes the recording is on, sometimes the camera is off, I walk on a path full of dead leaves on the ground, my steps make that noise of leaves being cracked, suddenly, I feel like I'm being watched or followed, sending chills all over my spine, it's getting really dark, at some point, the feeling of being chased or watched increases so much that I'm frightened to look behind me, I stop walking, the leaves are still being stepped on, the second pair of steps stops right after I stop, it was following my exact steps because of the noise but got caught, I realize it's not right, I run like hell, I didn't record anything of this, but I put some silly videos on YouTube with nothing more interesting, Visiting family in rural WV, the house is run down but in a lived-in way, not the crack house way. My uncle decides we should camp a short distance from the house, still in the woods because this thing is surrounded by a sea of trees. 
We set up a small campsite and got a fire going. It feels cozy. It's night, and my uncle, aunt, uncle's wife, and my dad decide to sleep outdoors near the campsite. I decided to stick around too. It's about 1 am, I can't remember 100%, but it was pretty dark out, and the only light was from the moon and my phone's flashlight. I really, really need to piss. Get out of my tent and wander a bit from camp to find a nice bush. Unzip my pants and get to watering the flowers. Notice a movement out of the corner of my eye. I shot my head around, panicking that a bear or something had just caught me with my dick out. I almost shit myself as I notice a figure ducking behind a tree. This was all low light, but from the glance I got, it looked like the figure was wearing some kind of robe or gown. Zip up my pants immediately, dick burning because I haven't finished pissing. I turned on my phone flashlight and grabbed my pocket knife, trying to be macho, plus my family was pretty close. Walk around a tree, waving around my phone. Nothing. Honestly, even more creeped out. I should note that the crickets out here are deafening, especially in the middle of the night. It was completely silent. All I could hear were leaves and sticks crunching with every step I made back to the campsite. As I'm walking back, I notice something when I step on a pretty thick branch, and it snaps. I hear the exact sound about 20-ish feet behind me. Then again, the same distance to my right. Ditto to my left. Flight or fight kicks in, and I bolt like a deer that just heard a gunshot. Dad is already out of his tent, the campfire's up, and he's very clearly tense about something or other. He tells me to just go back to the house. Everyone else gets out of their tents too, and uncle stays behind. Not getting any sleep tonight. Skip ahead an hour or so, and dad comes back into the house with uncle. Uncle is pale as a sheet, and dad seems really frustrated. I ask them what it was. According to my dad, they caught a few guys, middle-aged, walking through the woods. They bolted at the sight of my dad and uncle. I had no idea what they were doing there, but a few of them dropped some things. MFW, it was a knife, duct tape, and some kind of syringe. We weren't really able to report it to the local police or anything, and I didn't live with my extended family at the time, but weird shit involving these robed folks happened for the rest of the year, 2010, mostly just my family seeing them walking around the woods at night and early in the morning. They fucked off after my uncle bought a rifle and started hunting on his property. Cultists in WV, did you do any more investigation into what was in the syringe? Not much, but according to what little my aunt knew about first aid and stuff, it might have been some kind of sedative. My family, for whatever reason, never took this to the authorities for further investigation, but yeah. Oh, a WV story. Be me. Driving with GF in the woods on switchbacks to a campsite, we picked randomly from Google Maps that we've never been to before. The woods got spooky and thin, like you could peer off real deep into them. The picture is related to the border line, and you can clearly see how the forest changes. All animal no stopped. Dirt road. The forest gets dark even though it's like to pee and, and sunny above the trees. A wild old man appears. I didn't see any cars driving up no houses around. How did he get here? I'm already driving slowly. Pull up next to him. He's just walking along a dirt switchback. Literally 10 miles from anything. He must be 90 years old. He's walking with a limp. Frail. Withering. And literally looks like he hasn't eaten in years. I slow to a stop and roll down my window. His head turns awkwardly way too slowly. Do you know where Hawk Recreation area is? Yeah. Keep going along this road. It's where we are headed. GF looks creeped out. Old guy pipes up again. Oh good. E heard it was nice theory. I'm sure glad I'm going the right way. I feel like I've been walking forever. Look down at his clothes after noticing a strange bright blue. Green feather and his fedora look. Tated. Dusty. Tattered. And about from the 1920s. Nope. Nope. Nope D. Nope. I blurt out. Have a nice day, and drive off. Drive 20 more minutes to the campground. Completely empty, no nose, oh, wait, there's an old creepy van on the camp host site. The park car next to the camp host doesn't seem like anyone is in there. And it looks abandoned. Shrug it off and look around. Notice that you can see all the way down the switchbacks from this site. Notice the woods are way too manicure and thin. Even though they're dark as fuck, severe lack of understory like it's all been raked up. No mushrooms, no plants. Just trees and a small amount of duff. The hair stands up and gets more creepy. The van door opens. Creeok. Stomp 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 stomp. GF and I look at each other. 
decide to go back to the car even though we just heard someone next to the cab host van. Get back to the car. I notice the van door is open, and I can't see anyone around. Skin the woods and realize again that all of these trees are about wide enough to comfortably hide. Behind. Realize it's really easy to hide from people here if you understand your vantage points. Realize. We're being watched. Obviously. Then stink suddenly appears. Fuck, it stinks. Look inside the van it looks like a homeless guy lives there, but has just been there way too long. Drugs? Probably too. Notice a robe like a black hooded one tossed on the front seat. I don't understand why everything is so badly stained. Get in the car with your GF and start driving. We don't even look at each other. We just both knew we weren't staying here. At the exit, the same old fedora man is standing there. Glaring like the dude from that Heaven's Gate cult, Inwoods get even darker somehow. Fuck 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 fuck. Full panic mode. I've only been there for 10 minutes. No way did this old man make it up here at that time. But there he is. Realize his buddy is out there behind me somewhere peering from behind a tree. How many of these fuckers are hiding behind trees and watching us? Rustle around in the backseat for weapons. Can't find it. I can't stop looking straight ahead, but at the same time, I am not making eye contact. Fuck. I'll shoot this fucker down if he tries anything. Instant feeling that I could try, but this dude is probably ethereal, a demon, or whatever the fuck, floating right up the goddamn mountain. The windows are down, but I try not to make eye contact. Hear something as a car drives past him. H H H A V A N E E C D A I I. Make it out. After the switchbacks, the sun turns on again, and it's literally sunny in the middle of the afternoon. Probably serial killers, cults, demons, or whatever the fuck. I don't know, man. I haven't been camping since. I have a few spooky Inawood stories from the family camps up north. Years ago, up at camp, little me, maybe four or five. I only remember that I was so young because my little brother was in a crib at the time, and he was three years younger than me. Anyway, grandma had a tract of land on the lake up there, from the lake shore all the way up into the woods and ultimately to the little trail that served as the main road and across the street. We were in the double wide camper, in the back of the property. Grandma is up there with me. Mom, Dad, and little bro grandpa and other family members are in the fishing cabin down on the shore, usual camping activities, fire, esmores, etc. It's getting windy out. I don't remember much, but it seemed to be darker than usual, and I remember sitting on the porch with my mom and grandma. Suddenly, grandma notices the woods have gone quiet. We go inside. Grandma sleeps in the master bedroom down at the end of the hall. Mom and dad all sleep in the same bed in the second bedroom. Baby brother is in his crib. At some point in the night, I wake up. Dad isn't in bed anymore, mom is sitting up. It's thundering and raining loud as heck outside, blinding flashes in the window. I go outside and see the storm. Don't look out the window, mom says. Ask where dad is. Mom says to just stay in bed. Find out years later that dad was in the front room with grandpa's hunting rifle. Remember hearing noises outside that wasn't thunder or rain. Sounded like all kinds of things, mostly in human screams, but it's hard to hear over the thunder. But I hear it, and mom knows I hear it. Suddenly there's a loud noise, a big crash. Apparently, that was grandpa coming through the front door with his shotgun. I don't remember much else from that night. Just remember how quiet everyone was the next morning. Never really spoke of it again. Drinking with dad once a few years ago, I asked him about it. Kind of near the end of the story, I didn't mean to leave it on a cliffhanger, but I have other stories about camp and friends camps as well. Drinking with dad, I asked him about it. He says there have always been stories about that camp, especially when people are up there by themselves. Strange noises and smells, eerie silence, feelings of being watched. He says that one time grandpa thought he came face to face with something in the woods, but he never talked about it. Another time, some years later, when I was probably a freshman in high school, me and all my cousins, all around my age or my brother's age, were exploring in the woods behind the property. Parents, family, and adults are all down on the lake shore. Woods are deep. 
Find a small clearing with lots of boxes of china stacked up, messing around, flinging them into trees and smashing plates like mess UPS. Keep on going. Find an abandoned house in the woods. It's all overgrown. It looks like it's been sitting there for decades and decades. Cars in the backyard are covered in tarps. The eldest cousin is looking out the back window. His little brother and I are looking under one of the tarps and cars, and see another tarp under the car. It's clearly some sort of wrapped up object. It stinks. Cousin shouts out, what the heck look up. He's staggering back from the house and pointing. Look at what he's pointing at, glowing eyes in the window. We all take off running. It's a good mile or so, sprint the entire way back to the lake shore. None of us speak of it ever again. The few times I asked my cousin if he remembered, he went pale and quiet and said he remembered it clearly, saying there were people inside the house watching us. Only one spoopy story I can recall in a woods, 12 or 13 years old and boy scouts in a pickup, driving through the woods to camp middle of a Friday night, when we arrive one driver, one friend in the front seat, me and two friends in the back. Driver pulls over to register at the cabin or something, and friends in the back are playing Nintendo DS's. Me and the front seat friend are just talking. Headlights pointing forward down a dirt road. There's a dumpster next to the road, barely within view. Friend is mid sentence, when a short, hairless, emaciated creature leaps from the dumpster. It lands on two legs, looks toward the truck, and bolts across the dirt road, and into the forest. Friend, and I stop talking immediately. He turns toward me with wide eyes tell me you saw that dude i was going to ask you two other friends are clueless and ask what we saw dot we tell them but they don't buy it after we set up camp everyone was getting ready for bed dot me and the front seat are the last boys up dot they tell us to turn the propane lanterns out when we go to sleep dot lots of weird noises very stressed to get to talk about that thing we saw dot the lanterns go out of their own accord dot immediately look outside no one their daughter friends tell us to shut up and go to sleep dot we spent the rest of the night paranoid about the creature hey stalker Hope you enjoyed the video. If I could trouble you, give a like and a sub, it really helps the cause. And since you're already here, why not watch the next video? Anyways, stay comfy. Cortisol is bad for you.